So Glenn, we're going to go out there and we're going to grind the second ear. And I'm kind of excited about that because the first one was a challenge to get it uh, parallel with the bottom and also parallel with this end. And that means it has to be not just parallel here, but it's got to be straight as well. So we don't want it to be on an angle this way or this way or whatever which way. It's got to be square and parallel with two dimensions, the bottom and the end. So that's going to be our challenge is to go out there and grind the second one and make sure it's that way. And uh, I'm not sure why I'm wearing this old sport coat. By the way, uh, sport coat, shop coat. I found this thing in the basement that's probably been down there for 20 years, maybe more, I don't know, but I think that's paint because the stain won't come out. So anyway, don't, I'm, don't be embarrassed by it, Glenn. I'm sorry I'm wearing this thing, but... Mine's well, cleaner but, than yours. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go out back and let's take a look and see if we can't get this thing to, to do what we're supposed to do. I always love jig grinding. It's a lot of fun. And remember, we got this clean, wipe, stone, cleanliness is close to godliness, folks. I mean, it really is important. You get any burrs in there, you get any dirt in there whatsoever, and we're going to throw it off. We're going to have a problem. Remember, we're trying to work within tents here. We're not working within thousands. So let's go out back and let's get this thing done. I remember now we're working with intents, so it's very, very important that every bit of dirt, dust, burrs, chips, whatever, is out of the way. I can't work without stoning. You can't work with these kind of close tolerances. You don't know if there's a burr on there or not, so just to be sure, it's always a good idea to stone and wipe. Stone and wipe. You can get it pretty clean. You know, with a brush, that gets some of it off of there. But when you're really trying to get it close, you've got a stone and you've got to slide it across. So we're going to set that somewhere in there. The same thing with this guy. Again, I like the stone just in case, you know, somebody banged this one by mistake. We'll set that like so. Make sure that it's clean. Now we're going to grab our part. Thank you, Glenn. We'll set this baby up here. Like so. And I, I, I know basically about where the alignment is. It's somewhere in that area. So now I'm going to put my clamps on it and then we can tweak it in later. But right now I just need to get the clamps on it. I'm pretty convinced that we've got this within a couple of tenths. Basically a plus couple there, minus a couple there, Minus a couple there, and minus about two there. I think that's as good as we're going to get it with it. So we'll leave it alone, and we'll remove our arbor, and let's see what we've got. Let's see how good this expanding arbor that we made works for go. us. I know the fix for that. We're going to remove this X bolt on the bottom, X nut, bolt. That should give us the clearance that we need. I can always raise this up, you know. There we go, folks. Got it. <laughs> well, I think we're good to grind. The worst thing that can happen is we screw up the part, which I don't think is going to happen. We're going to have to fool with this thing by hand to get it to do what we want it to do. So we'll also have to back it off. Well, this is working a lot smoother now. The damn thing was pretty stiff before. So let's see what we got there. Yeah, we're good. We're good. 
gently. Don't want to move it. Good. Good. I think we're good all the way around. All right. Now we got to make sure that our stops are set appropriately. We don't want to crash. No crash is allowed. We're just carefully. That's perfect. Also perfect. Okay, I think we're ready to grind. Ready to lock and roll. There goes our oscillation now. Oh, I love it. Before it was taking two hands to move this thing. What'd you do? Well, I lubed it earlier and I think it just decided to soak in. Okay. This thing's right in the way. I don't know what to do about it. Maybe cut it off. <laughs> Oh, look at that, it's starting to clean up. I like that sound. Cleaning up real nice. While that's doing that, I'm gonna grab my mics. All right. Another guy, important guy, he's on the saw, I'll tell you. It takes a lot of talent to do that, believe it or not. That saw is very, very important because we can make a lot of scrap you can put too much material on, then it takes too much time to finish it. Important position. Every position is important. Except mine, I don't do anything. I just sit back and rake it in. Ha! <laughs> All right, we'll give that a check and see what we got. <laughs> well, that's showing about three tenths, which is what we want. Yeah, I think we're there. Well, I'm afraid this will be the moment of truth. <laughs> We'll go check it out. Let's go check it. The moment of truth, man. Let's see what we got here. So. We'll call that zero. We'll turn this around. Look at that, within one tenth. Are That's you kidding sweet. me? I've lost my touch, dude. Now we gotta try it the other way. I mean if I'm within four or five tenths, man, I'm good. So here. have to have the indicator on zero it's good enough like that's plus one let's see what we got on the other side <coughs> it's within about three three to four tenths three and a half tenths three tenths so within three tenths this way and one tenth the other way, how cool is that? It's real cool. <laughs> so it just goes to show you that the arbor works, the jig grinder works, the system works. I love it. 
So the guys did a good job squaring this up because if it weren't square, we wouldn't have that uh, that ability to to get everything lined up. So it's all cool. So there you go. Now we're gonna one more test. We're gonna get a shaft and fit it all the way through because this is just checking each end. Okay. So we're gonna get that shaft here in a minute. We're gonna try that, and if it slips in, we are good to go, baby. Sweet. This is the last moment of truth. We have the shaft that's supposed to go in there as a slip fit. And that's what it is. Now the real issue is, is it going to line up with the other hole? Because that's what's critical. You ready? Yep. Ooh, baby. And I'm talking. And I'm talking slip fit. We're not talking slop, brother. Not at all. Well, it's within three tenths one way and one tenth another way. So there you go. I couldn't be happier, man. The yeah. grinder is doing this job, and this is so cool. I can't even begin to tell you. So there you have it. Uh, we'll go inside and we'll talk about it. We'll do a closing and tell you guys what we think about all this. So we have two more to grind, which I'm not going to do a video on that. I'm just going to go ahead and grind them. Just get them out of the way because we're all set up. So let's go back up front. All right, Glenn. Now that uh, Don has done these out in the shop and he's told us how good they are, let's double check his numbers in here and see how good they really are. Yeah. Well, let's check this side over here first. All right, we got one inch, 126 and five tenths to the top of our roll. We'll come over to this side, do the same function. We're 126 and five tenths. So we're actually getting a reading that's a little closer than Don thought he was out in the shop. So. You know, he's he's better than he thinks. Should we tell him? No, absolutely not. <laughs> there's there's some things that you're better off to keep to yourself, my friend. Uh, let's check this way now. All right, one inch, three seventy-seven and five. And on this side, one inch, 377 and seven. So again, he's within two. And out in the shop, he was reading within three. So actually, this checks a lot better than he thought it was. And it's well within tolerance. So I guess uh, we can turn him loose and let him grind the rest of them. All right, sounds good. All right, thanks, Glenn. Yep. Yeah, I'm a happy camper, man. I mean, I, I'll tell you, what's exciting about this is not the fact that I was able to grind it within a couple of tenths and get it to fit. But remember, we're trying to prove that, that the jig grinder is in fact doing its job because we didn't know that. Remember, I had complaints from a couple of the employees that uh, it's just not right, the jig grinder doesn't grind right, it's not straight. And I said, remember, I said, we're not sure if that's accurate or not. Is it the grinder or is it the grinder hand? We don't know that. So there's so much, look, I'm not criticizing an employee that may have been blaming the machine when it wasn't the machine. The issue is this is very difficult work. When you're working with intents like that, this is not easy. And anything can go wrong. And by that, what I mean by that is that, and let me hold this up for just a moment. And by the way, we, we just need to show this. How cool is that? That is really cool. And, and it wouldn't do that if you didn't have it square and parallel. Look, if we're grind, grinding a hole like this on this end and like that at that end, or like this over here or like this over here, any one of those things is going to throw it off. There's not much forgiveness in there to get this to line up like that and to hold a slip fit. Remember, we're not talking about a thousands clearance. We're talking about a couple of tenths clearance. So to get all that to line up just right, 
means that everything has to be uh, exactly perfect. And I wasn't real pleased with one of them. I mean, these things came out within two tenths this way. And when I set it up on end this way, one of them was off about four to five tenths. And I felt we could have done better than that. So I'm not sure what that's all about. I have a sus suspect that either I didn't get all the dirt off from behind this thing when I clamped it, uh, or this face was not quite parallel uh, with, with this side. And I didn't check that. So if this side is off, remember I was grinding off here, but I checked it this way. So if these two sides are not exactly square, I'm going to have a problem with this. And, I, and I, did, I assumed that it was right, and I didn't check that. So the other possibility is clamping. You may recall I clamped it back in here, and there's a hollow back here. And that could possibly have caused it a little bit, although I don't think so because it's of the way it's off like this, it's not off like this. Yeah. So I think my guess is that either I had some boogers underneath there, which I doubt, maybe a little bit of dust, but remember again, it's only off four to five tenths. That's, that's more than I would like to see. This one was perfect, and number two was perfect. Number three was the one that was off, because I did all three of these. I figured while I'm set up, I might as well grind them and get them out of the way. So anyway, I, nonetheless, I learned by it, and I'm a happy guy. And uh, to, just, just to reiterate, to ha this is really exciting for me, you know, to be able to go back there, run a jig grinder, and get this done within a couple of tenths, and prove that the machine is OK. So that's very exciting to me. So in any case, appreciate your comments. Uh, we're going to do some more videos on jig grinding. We're also going to take some field trips coming up. I'm excited about that. So keep an eye out for us. Subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Thanks for your comments. Love it. Keep your comments coming, folks. And again, thanks for watching.